Hi right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, uh, the Hut, uh, and we are here in the Twilight Zone at this rate. Met fans frustrated, and of course, you know, you have these parasites like WFAN and people on Twitter who aren't Mets fans, and even anti-Met Met fans, suggesting... The ridiculousness of suggesting that the New York Mets trade probably the greatest power hitter in the history of this franchise and Pete Alonso away need to get their heads examined. Now before we get into this lovely video on the baseball hood too, you need to subscribe and like this video. Now normally I don't care what WFAN says because I think I've said this many times if you've followed me over the years uh, that the fan on the fan they hate the Mets. All the hosts have an agenda. And their agenda is to dump on the Mets. At every turn. At every moment. And it doesn't matter if they're Mets fans. Or they say they're Mets fans or not. Uh, their agenda is the Mets don't do anything right. They do everything wrong. And they should just give up. The low IQ response about anything that happens with the Mets can be summed up as Mets will be Mets, which is a, a kind of a common thread of that low IQ host, Keith McPherson, who was a, who was a disgrace. But besides and being such a, a snappy dresser too. But uh, that has been sort of the, the debate on the fan and on Twitter is to, the Mets should trade Pete Alonso. Now I'm going to point something out. Uh, when the Mets years ago... Uh, let Daryl Strawberry go. How many years were the Mets bad? For seven years, they were bad. Really bad. Six years. From 91 to 96, they were terrible. Unwatchable. In 91, that team, in 92, what led to that? Well, first thing they let happen was Daryl leaving. And they never replaced him in the lineup. Peter Alonso is irreplaceable in this lineup. Um... And I'll give you an example. When when he breaks records, which he's been breaking records since he got here, they compare him to guys like Ralph Kiner as a home run hitter. They can Akit Hernandez compares him to Harmon Killebrew. He breaks records of guys like Joe DiMaggio. All these great right-handed hitters in the history of, of the game. And over the last month. I get comments about Pete that he is the next Dave Kingman. Dave Kingman was a disaster as a player. He wasn't a good defensive player. He wasn't. He hit the ball a long way, but he wasn't a guy that you feared with men on base. Pete Alonso is very good in the clutch. He should be better, but he's been good in the clutch. He's got a ton of walk-off home runs, a ton of walk-off hits. Um... But this comment, this sort of attitude of trading every, like, like I said, if you move him, if you trade him, we trade him until. Um, that's a, a separate issue, obviously. But you'll never be able to replace that home run hitter. Mets don't have anything in the farm system that can replace him. So where are you getting that power hitter from? Where are you getting 40, 45 home runs from? I don't know. Dave Kingman was not a guy that consistently hit 45 home runs every year. Pete has done that twice. And if it wasn't for the injury to his wrist, he'd be closing in on that. Which he might hit 40 home runs anyway. But Dave Kingman, that's such an old, that's such an old, like, you know, an old Mets fan comes up with stuff like that. Old, cranky old Mets fan comes up with that. You know, because they can't come up with anything kind of uh, today or uh, contemporary. I never saw Dave Kingman. They came and played 40 years ago. So that tells you what the reference is. Um, like I said, you move Pete, and it, it'll take the Mets 30 years to find a hitter that can be like him. Which, by the way, is what happened. The Mets did not develop anybody like Pete for 30 years. We didn't mention David Wright, but David Wright wasn't like that. David was more of a 30 home run guy, number five hitter, classic number five hitter. Pete's a classic cleanup hitter. 
And if Pete goes on to move on to some other team and wins a World Series or wins an MVP or wins more home run titles, it's 500 home runs and another uniform, the same people that complained, then why did you trade them? Why did you trade Pete? Mets are going to Mets. They're the same people. The same people complain. I, I've said this plenty of times. The media hate the Mets. The media in this town, they hate the New York Mets. Okay? And don't ever forget, Jeff Wilpon is still skulking around causing trouble. Just because the, the Wilpons don't run the show anymore doesn't mean that they, they don't have people in the media that are pushing this narrative of trading Pete and, and making things worse for us as fans because they hate us. Um... But if you're a fan, you should be happy to have a guy that's hitting 40 home runs every year. Uh, 45 home runs, 50, 53 home runs the first year with the Mets. And you want to trade that? I remember after the, uh, after 2020, everybody wanted Dom Smith. Dom Smith's the best. And I said, look, this guy's a great home run hitter. They don't grow on trees, to be honest with you. Now, you can disagree with me all you want. But, I've had somebody write to me all week saying that Pete's a selfish player, he's a selfish guy. Because he, he went to, to participate in the All-Star game. That he's already been there, he's proven everything. Um, but that has nothing to do, he didn't like, you know, what's resting for three days, four days going to help that rest? It's not a big deal. He's not going all out in the home run derby. He didn't have a good home run derby, by the way. I think probably had more to do with the rest than really anything else. But uh, when you get a player like him, you hold on to him as long as you can. You don't let him leave. You don't trade him away. Again, the biggest knock in trading him is when you'll never get the value that you want out of him. And two, most importantly, you can't replace the numbers. Who's going to play first? Who's going, to, who's going to back clean up? I don't know. Well, somebody. They'll put somebody there. They'll trade for somebody. You cannot replace the numbers. If that were the case, oh, they'll just they'll go sign Shoei Altani. They'll do that. And get some first. Get, get Don Smith to play first. You know. You can't, you can't do that. Um, they need to sign into a long-term deal. Sign to an eight-year deal and get it over with. He's probably going to get the free agency, but I think that they will not be outbid for to Pete. Um, we'll see how Pete performs over the last two months of the season, especially while all these guys, some of these guys are going to be getting out of here. Uh, he's the he is the least of the Mets' problems is Pete Alonso. Um, Pete, we need him to stay here because he's the best position player that they've ever produced. He's probably the greatest power hitter they've ever produced. And I'm going to talk about Mike Piazza. Um, guys that they drafted, developed, and played here. He's better than Daryl Strawberry, quite frankly. He really is. Daryl's a different kind of like personality in and of himself. You know, a little more mysterious, a little more edge to him than Pete does. But they, they you know, Pete's Pete. Pete's breaking records you've never seen uh, with any player. Uh, except for guys that are Hall of Famers, you know. Uh, that's my thought. You don't move a great player. He's he's a great home run hitter. You, you don't move him. And you hold on to him, like I said, as long as you can. And and he's got another five years in him to hit another 35, 40 homers per year. He's going to hit 500 home runs. If he stays healthy, 500 home runs, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. You want to lose that? You want to say, well, there's another... I mean, all the guys that are complaining about Pete now will be the same guys complaining. Why didn't the Mets keep Pete? Pete was such a good Met. Oh, you know, it's the same people, folks. It's the same people. Uh, don't doubt me. And the same people complaining about the Mets are not Met fans. Remember, WFN, they have an agenda. Mets can't do anything right. Although they've done a lot more right over the last 10 years than the Yankees have. Let's see. The Yankees had one rookie of the year. The Mets have had two the last 10 years. The Mets have been to the World Series once. The Yankees have not. Uh, the Mets have one batting title. The Yankees have one batting title. Pretty equal 
Except the Mets have actually had a better last 10, 10 years. They really have. Mets have had two no hitters. I think they've had one. But the Mets, it's, it's funny. If you take away the fact they have won a World Series, the Mets have done just as much as the Yankees have done. But the Mets have looked at as a failed franchise? I don't get that. I don't understand that. There's plenty of franchises that never won a World Series. The Padres have never won. The Mariners have never won. And there are teams that haven't won in a long time. The Reds haven't won in 30 years. Up until recently, the Braves hadn't won in 25 years. Up until recently, the, the Dodgers haven't won in over 30 years. But the Mets are a failed franchise? I, I don't get that. Well, you let me know what you think about this video. And of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.